This is Andy Gutierrez from StarWars.com, and you are listening to Coffee with Kenobi with Dan Z. This is the podcast you're looking for. This is James Arnold Taylor, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. Hmm, I have a good feeling about this. Hey, hey, hello, everybody, and welcome back to CWK Live every Monday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm your host, Dan Z, or Dan Zare. Thrilled to be talking Star Wars with each and every one of you. It's great to be with all of you, and hey, look, I know a lot of you have the shirt. I got mine the other day, finally, so I'm excited to be sporting the brand new logo. These shirts are very, very comfortable from Tee Public, so be sure to go to coffeewithkenobi.com slash shop to purchase your Coffee with Kenobi brand new logo t-shirt sport celebration or on May the 4th. This is the week of Star Wars, the week of Star Wars Day. I've been telling all my students, you know, this week is a major holiday, right? And I get a couple reactions. First, some kids who know kind of how my brain works kind of smile. Other kids look at me like they don't know what I'm talking about. And then when I do tell them, it's more of the same, more of the same really kind of a thing. Let's bring in all of our friends. It's great to see all of you. Minta is here. This is the way it's CWK Day. Hello, Minta. Blake, hello, Blake. What's up, man? Good to see you. Mary says, happy Monday, everyone. It's Star Wars Month. Yes, it is. So that's very exciting. Ross says, don't get behind Tom at the photo booths. Happy Monday. So that is a bit of a joke from CWK. Pour over. Very good. Jason, hello there. Excited to talk about tonight's episode. It really heightens the sense of urgency and struggle in the Rebels fight against the Empire on Lothal. Yes, it absolutely does. Greg is here as well. Good evening to you, Greg. I'm hearing, by the way, that some people are already getting their celebration badges. I know mine were mailed uh, today, so we're going to be able to see them. Makes it very real, doesn't it? Brian is here. Brian, it's CWK Monday. It's the law. That's right. Good to see you, Brian. Hello, Liberty. Nice to have you back on the show. Mary is still waiting for her shirt. You know, I ordered the shirt couple shirts and I ordered some stickers. I still haven't gotten my stickers yet, so I don't know what the deal is. Oh, Mint says, yes, this is the May. Oh, that's good. That's good. Bravo. Well, you know what? Real applause here. Nice job. This is the May. All right, everybody. Uh, Greg says, I saw the shipping notification of the badges earlier. It's getting close, isn't it? So fun. Speaking of getting closer, let's go ahead and take a look at what is brewing in the world of Star Wars this week. Jamie is with us too. Hello, Jamie. I, you know, I'm not going to change that video. It's got the old, the classic logo, so I'm going to keep that. I like this one, but I'm going to keep that one. All right. So what's brewing in Star Wars this week? I got a lot of stuff to show you. A lot of things that I have received for Star Wars Day. Uh, of course, today you're going to have your top five moments from Star Wars Rebels Empire Day. A ton of May the 4th merchandise to talk about. And naturally your comments and questions. So... What is brewing in the world of Star Wars this week? So I got quite a few things. A lot of you may have noticed that Lego was kind of to send me the massive Luke Skywalker land speeder. Mason and I were working on, on that over the weekend. We also had a lot of baseball games. Uh, we also went to St. Louis for a baseball game. So we've been pretty busy. I haven't had as much time to build it as I would like. But it's all going to work out. It's kind of fun to enjoy the process. And Mason did want me to tell you. You may notice he's not in the comments yet. That is because... Mason is at baseball practice right now, so he sends his well wishes while he is on the field. He, he, he didn't tell me to tell you this, but I'm going to tell you anyway. He pitched three innings the other day, and he had four strikeouts in three innings. So I thought that was pretty cool for eight. So right on, Mason. Proud dad right here. All right, so uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to make the screen a little bit bigger here because i got a lot of stuff to show you, and it's going to take the whole screen for sure. All right, so first... Disney was kind enough to send me this massive free package of May the 4th merchandise. I posted some of the pictures today on Twitter, on Instagram, and on Facebook, and of course in the CWK Cafe, our Facebook group. But I want to show you uh, more of a close-up of what we got. So the first thing we have, these are in no particular order. I've got a, a Grogu car freshener. It's hard to describe what it smells like, but it smells good. It smells fresh. On the back, it says, Imagine Grogu's meditative presence as he reaches out with the Force. Notice of gardenia fill the air with touches of lavender and rosemary. That's what it smells like. Gardenia, I recognize that. 
Uh, Brian says, Mad Eye Mason has a good eye for pitching. Yes, he does. So Homesick was responsible for this. They're also responsible. I've been waiting to open this. This is a Star Wars. Um, it is a candle from Homesick as well. From Tatooine. The box is really, really nice right here. You can probably see the back with the ingredients. Notes of juniper and desert shrub rise from cooling canyons amidst the endless dunes. Imagine basking in the binary sunset as Luke Skywalker speeds across dusty plains in his trusty land speeder. And on the top, the famous a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, I'm waiting for the light to adjust there. But I really need to get a separate camera set up. One day, kids. One day. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, wow, it does smell great. I can tell you that right now. Here's the candle itself. Just says Star Wars Tatooine and then the logo for Homesick. They're... That smells amazing. It's, uh, it says natural soy wax blend, hand poured. Uh, let's see. It doesn't really tell me what the flavor is supposed to be. I really should be better about this as a writer and all that, but I think it smells similar to kind of like gardenias, just very, very fresh. It's not how I picture Tatooine smelling, and if it does... That's where I'm moving because that is pretty good stuff. I'm going to be lighting this after the show tonight. Yeah, it's a good candle. I mean, you will really enjoy it. If you like candles, this is the one for you. All right. Much, much more to come, friends. Marvel is kind enough to send me a, let's see, a code for Obi-Wan issue number one. It, I'm able to access it on May the 4th, so... I'll be downloading that for sure. We've also got the Dagobah Jedi Training. This is the 18 piece. It's a it's a thousand. 18 plus is the age limits. It is a thousand pieces. Uh, it's great. It's got Luke's X-wing sticking out of the swamp. So very very sharp. I would be building this after I finish the land speeder. So lots of Lego homework. That's a good thing, by the way. That's a good thing. I'm noticing a little bit of blur on this. So I'm going to try to adjust this. Maybe I can get a little bit clearer for us. That's a little bit better. Mm, a little bit. All right. We've also got, I end up getting two of these. I've got the 50th anniversary Obi-Wan Kenobi here. Sorry for the glare. Really, really sharp. This appears to me to be from Revenge of the Sith. Uh, yeah, it says he battles his friend Anakin Skywalker. So yeah, this is from Revenge of the Sith. Basically... When Disney uh, sends you something like this, so you get a bunch of different packages from a bunch of different companies. It's really great. Of course, we've got Mike Chen's book, Brotherhood, right here. A great book. Hopefully, you heard my conversation with Mike a couple of weeks ago on Coffee with Kenobi. And finally, finally, I've got a Bluetooth speaker of the child. Now, they sent me one last Christmas. This is from Biddy Boomers. They sent me one last Christmas, same thing, but it has Grogu with a Santa hat, so that was pretty great. So those are all from Disney. Thank you again, Disney, for sending me these free gifts. This was amazing. Love it. We're going to have a lot of fun with it. We have already. So there's the first round. Ben highly recommends Lego set, and Ben posted in the CWK Cafe that Lego set. Looked great. I'm going to take a quick time out before I show more of these goodies to remind you of something. So those hats right there, the Coffee with Kenobi hats with the logo, You've got two days, really one, you've got till midnight tonight and tomorrow. Tomorrow's the last day. The orders close on May the 4th, but I think we have to sell four or five more hats for this order to go. It's actually been a little bit slower than I expected, but that's okay. Times are, are busy and people have lots of things they're spending their money on. Totally understand that. But if you do want to order the coffee with Kenobi hat with that logo, you have until tomorrow to make that happen. There are links on Instagram, Twitter, you can go to coffeewithkenobi.com at the very, very top right. You will see the link to click to purchase your hat. Again, you've only got until, you've only got, you've got one hour and four days. I'm sorry, you've got one. <laughs> Let's reverse that, kids. You've got four hours and one day. It closes tomorrow night at 11.59 p.m. So if you want to buy one of these hats, you are running out of time. I will say also, when we did the hat order last time for the CWK Alliance hats. As soon as it closed, suddenly a lot of people wanted to buy them, but it was too late, and I felt really bad about that. So here, you've only got a you got till tonight, and then tomorrow, tomorrow night, it closes at 11:59 p.m. So be sure 
to purchase this if you're interested in doing so. Of course, you're not under obligation to do that, but I mean, I'm excited because I just want I just want to wear it to celebration. I just think it looks cool. Wear it with the shirt. It's going to be awesome. All right. Now let's look at what Hasbro sent me. Hasbro sent me a massive box as well. Very, very kind. More free gifts from Hasbro. Star The week of Star Wars Day at the Zara household is, is pretty hopping, I got to say. So I've got all the, the, the um, what was the correct name? The, the Bounty Collection. Got all the Bounty Collection from Hasbro of Grogu. So we've got the first one, him sticking out of the jar. We got him with the Krinkas on his head. Right? Pretty cute. You have, let's see. You got him playing with uh, Frog Lady's little child right there. This is when he was nice and not eating anything. Okay. You've got uh, him playing with a butterfly, which is adorable. These are all super cute. None of these, uh, none of these are, have plastic in them either, which is pretty cool. Then you've got him walking on. It appears to be snow. He's got footprints of, uh, he's got snow on his feet right there. And then the last one, the macaroons. I believe this, these are the macaroons, right? Um, yep. He is munching away on these babies. Still sort of thing. It's hilarious that when he did that, and to the Mandalorian, suddenly that kind of cookie was very, very popular and hard to find. All right. Also have Star Wars Lightsaber Forge. This is the Mace Windu that you can add to your Star Wars Lightsaber Forge because you can, of course, build and mix and match these things. On the back, it shows you all the different kinds of options that you have. And then they are also kind enough to send me Luke's lightsaber as well. So, yeah. Pretty cool. I'm going to have pictures of all these things online here fairly soon, but I wanted to show you this as well. Minta says she has that pity boomer. Great sound. That sound is really strong, isn't it? For a small speaker, it's very powerful. Also, I'm pretty excited about this one. You know I don't get a ton of Black Series, but this one I'm going to be holding on to. This is Ahsoka Tano from The Mandalorian, the Rosario Dawson version of Ahsoka Tano. A really great likeness. I'll try to get that a little bit closer for you. But it really looks like Rosario Dawson is really nice. So pretty cool. And it's got the dual lightsaber. Speaking of, you may have seen it on May the 4th on Shop Disney. They're going to have the Ahsoka Tano legacy lightsabers from The Mandalorian. I don't have that yet. So you can t I can tell you what I'll be doing on May the 4th. That's for sure. Also, as promised, another Obi-Wan Kenobi. You know what? Since I've got two, let's do a giveaway. Let's do an Obi-Wan Kenobi giveaway for the Black Series. So this one right here that I'm holding, I will, after Facebook Live, I want you to put why you love Obi-Wan Kenobi in the CWK Cafe, and I'll randomly select a winner who will receive this, and maybe I'll throw in a bonus uh, prize in here as well. So after Facebook Live, go into the CWK Cafe and explain or share with us why you love Obi-Wan Kenobi. A random winner will win this action figure right here. I'm going to put this up here. There you go. That is going to be in your happy little hands if you are randomly selected. Mita says, do I pay my mortgage or splurge on Star Wars swag? You know what? Mortgage. But I understand the temptation for sure. There's a lot of cool Star Wars stuff, but I don't think that's ever going to slow down. I got some more action figures to show you. Pardon me while I grab them from the floor here. Okay, I'm going to do these in order of, um, well, when I found them. So first we've got Bo-Katan Kreese. These are the, this is the, um, the vintage collection three and three quarter inch figures. She's got a removal helmet, which is great. So there's that. Then we've got Obi-Wan Kenobi from Attack of the Clones. To me, it looks like a new sculpt. I could be wrong, but it sure looks like a new sculpt to me. And finally, this is one I'm the most excited about. I'm not sharing this one. This is the retro collection, Boba Fett, right? I love it so much for Morak. It's a great looking retro figure. This is the kind of thing where you got to buy two of them and open them up. I mean, this thing, I love the retro line. It's pretty much the only action figures I collect anymore, but it's, it's great. Love it, love it, love it. It's got the, it, looks, it just looks like the classic Kenner card from the good old days. Blake says, I need that Boba Fett. Yes. Someday, Blake, one might be yours. Not this one. 
but someday one will be out there with your name on it, my friend. All right, then I've got three of the mission fleet. First, we've got the Delta Seven Jedi Starfighter with Ahsoka Tano. Really great. Uh, Mason laid claim to this one right away. That is a perk of being Mason Z, right? And then you've got Star Wars Mission Fleet. You've got Moff Gideon and the Outland TIE Fighter. Comes with Moff Gideon there. And then this one is particularly fascinating to me. This is Luke Skywalker and Grogu in the X-Wing. It's in, and Of course, there isn't a scene like this in the Mandal or in the Book of Boba Fett. But I really like this. I like the idea of this. There's the back of it. Pretty cool. So that's it. That is it. That's that's a pretty good haul, right? So thank you again to Disney and Hasbro and all the other companies, Mattel and Del Rey and Biddy Boomers and Home. Let's see, what is it called? I want to get this right. And Marvel Comics, Homesick for the Candles and the, the Amazing Sense here. Ah, uh, gosh, I think I've got a Lego. Everybody, it's been a, it's been a, my cup runneth over. Thank you so much to all the companies involved who were, were able to provide these free gifts for me. Really happy. Again, as soon as Coffee with Kenobi is done, I'm going to post a place on Facebook where you can put your name down and tell us what you love about Obi-Wan Kenobi, and a random winner will get and receive one of these Obi-Wan Kenobi Black Series figures. Hard to get a child seat in the next wing. Well, apparently, but I don't know. Luke is pretty strong in the force, Josh, so it's hard to say. All right, I think that's pretty good. Uh, Jessica's here. Hello, Jessica. Jessica says, I think the Ahsoka Black Series is my favorite. It's, it's a great looking sculpt. It really, really is. I'm going to change gears a little bit. Uh, I've adjusted this logo several times because on Thursday, May 26th at 7 o'clock p.m. at the Hilton Anti Mix Lounge, we have a Coffee with Kenobi celebration podcast meetup. But it's not just for Coffee with Kenobi. It's not just for people who run podcasts. It is for anybody who listens to podcasts. So whether you have a Star Wars podcast or like listening to Star Wars podcasts, you are welcome and encouraged to come. We want to meet as many people as possible. So please spread the word. There seemed to be a bit of a misunderstanding that is only for podcasters themselves. That is not true. It's for anybody who loves podcasts. You can go to the Hilton Anaheim Mix Lounge and meet all of your favorite podcasters. I mean, that's pretty exciting. Well, I shouldn't say all of them, but quite a few of them are going to be there. We're going to be there. Um, let's see, WDW Radio, Lou Mangiello is going to be there. There's going to be, uh, Jedi News is going to be there, Fanta Tracks. A ton of great podcasts and podcasters are going to be there, so be sure to join us. While you're joining, of course, Greg's going to be there from Rebel Base Card, naturally, as well. Star Wars Splash page with Matt and Jeff. It's going to be awesome. Uh, on June 18th, if you're in the central Illinois area at the Peoria Riverfront Museum, I will have a book talk and an author Q&A followed by a book signing. And then it's not on this, but after that, you are able to see on the big screen Star Wars A New Hope with me. It's going to be amazing, right? So be sure if you're in the area, I would love to see you on Saturday, June 18th for the book talk, signing, author Q&A. And then we'll follow up the night by watching Star Wars A New Hope. Maybe we'll do some spontaneous podcasting there as well. As for the I Am Your Father, Lessons for Parents, Protectors, and Mentors, my third book, comes out on May 27th. It's going to be great to get my hands on that amazing uh, little book I'm really, really proud of. So that was a mistake. Whoops. Uh, Peoria is only a short three and a half hour drive from Indy. That's right, Brian. That's true. Uh, Ross has made that drive a couple of times. Uh, Brian says he can't wait to read it. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I'm sorry, Ben. Ben said, thank you, Ben. It's going to be fun. I, I mean, I was very honored to write again my second book with Amy Raquel, my co-author on this. We wrote the Star Wars Character Encyclopedia new editions together as well. But let's go ahead. What you came here for. Top five moments from the Star Wars Rebels episode Empire Day. That is a little scene of Ken jumping into the air. A very exciting sequence from a really great episode. So let's go ahead and take a look at your top five moments from Star Wars Rebels Empire Day. It's really great and rewarding to me 
that so many of you are watching Star Wars Rebels for the first time with us as we talk about this incredible series, Star Wars Rebels, going through the episodes. It's been fun to revisit them. Some episodes I met remember better than others, so this has been really fun for me. I hope you're having a good time as well. It sure seems like it based on the feedback. It makes me very happy. What a great community we have. Let's go ahead and jump into number five. I actually didn't get images tonight. Uh, ran out of time, but we've got your top fives here. For me, it's the Chopper Flex. He does, has done this a lot in the season, or in the series too, but he's really proud of himself. He makes a little flex, uh, makes his little humming noise, and it's great. It's hysterical. It's funny. Always lightens the tension, so we like that. That's my number five. Not particularly profound, but fun. Ross's five. Sebo the roadie and bumbling about and just spurting out technical info about the Empire. Informative and entertaining. Interesting. Interesting choice. Mean does number five. Loath the cat versus Ezra, Ezra Bridger. He's trying so hard to make a connection, but not everyone is a cat person. That is very well said. Me too. I like that. Brian's five. Chopper flexes his muscles when he takes out the TIE fighter. Boom. Brian and I are tied for number five. Mary's number five. Zeb says to Callus, remember me? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good. Blake's number five is diving more into Ezra's past. I like that as well, Blake. Pretty cool. Greg's number five. Appearance of the Grand Inquisitor. Look, great looking back to see him in this first season rewatch. And the menace of him is great because, of course, when we first lived this series, we didn't know what was going to happen with him, but he was very fearsome and intimidating. So it was, it was very nerve-wracking. Jason's number five. Clone Wars throwbacks to Clone Trooper Helmet behind the bar and Deep Bradley Baker as the voice of Ezra's father. That's right. Good catch. Henrik's number five. Henrik, welcome back, buddy. Henrik's number five is a humor all throughout the episode. There is a lot of it, too. Number five for Ben. It's Ezra's quiet moment hearing his parents' voice. Voices. Sometimes we just need to get away from it all. Plus, it's nice to see how his parents' legacy lives on in Ezra. Yes, it is. Yes, it absolutely is. Minta's five, starting to learn more about Ezra's past, opening the doors to whatever happened to them. Yeah, good. Good call. You'll notice, by the way, I know Mason's not here tonight, but I do have the water in advance. So, Mason, you don't have to leave baseball practice to give me water. We're good to go there. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into number four. Number four for me. Oh, sorry, Jamie's number five. Did you see it? So beautiful, all the colors. If, if I didn't know any better... I don't think Kano is stuck in the 60s. I'm going to talk about that right now, Jamie. That was a perfect transition, my friend. Thank you for that. Kanan as a surfer, dude. I can just picture Freddie Prince Jr. having a ball with this particular sequence. It was hilarious. The animation's really fun, too, because I feel like it kind of captures the spirit of Freddie. Now, I haven't talked to Freddie in a while, but uh, when Rebels was out, he was on the show like four or five times. We had the best time talking to that guy. So seeing that sequence that Jamie just talked about for his number five really makes me happy. Ross is four. The angry Lothcat, ha ha ha. During the Jedi lesson from Kanan to Ezra, you have to let go. It's pretty cool, right? Kind of like there's a little bit of innocence there, but a little bit of fearsomeness, and that's kind of encapsulates Ezra to a T, I think. Number four for Minta. Zebo, there was some comedic timing with him bumbling about TIE fighters, but it was disheartening to learn how he became a slave to the Empire. Very sad. Very sad. No one wins in that sort of situation. Greg's four hair, I almost feel bad about blowing it up. Which, of course, she doesn't, but there's a nice uh, sarcasm there, which we like. Mary's number four that we've heard a couple times already is Ezra and the Loath Cat. I can't believe I forgot that. That's good. And that's definitely on Mason's list, too. Brian's four. Kanan's four sleep from the transport, and he hovers midair, then gets picked up by the ghost. It is so smooth in a total Jedi move. Yes. Love it. Jason's number four. The in-universe use of the Imperial March, which I think is terrific. And Henrik's number four is Empire Day being Ezra's birthday. Yeah, we're going to talk about that too, Hen Henrik. That's important, I would say. Ben's number four, Sabine. I have no plans on stopping. She is always having so much fun being a rebel. She really is just unabashedly enjoying exploding things, making them blow up real nice. Blake's four, how the Empire Parade gave us strong World War II vibes from Germany. Really gave the evil vibes. Yes, it did. Uh, Ross is the, the moisture evaporator at the Zare Homestead is online. It's true. It's true. <laughs> Cheers to that, my friend. Cheers to that. All right. I think I got everybody for number four. Actually, Jamie, if you have a four, uh, feel free. I'm going to take a drink of water real quick and mute my mic so you don't have to hear me drinking. All right. Uh, Liberty's number four. 
Gal Travis breaking into the Empire's news feed. That guy is intriguing. Yes, Liberty, he is. Yes, he is. Gal Travis is a very interesting character that we're going to presumably see a little bit more about. Time will tell, won't it? All right, well, let's go ahead and jump into number three. Number three for me. There's four for Jamie. It is the law. I love the sarcasm. Yes, absolutely. Number three for me has been mentioned before. I think Brian mentioned it. Kanan's Leap. Look, I love that action sequence. Whenever we get to see little snippets of how legitimately powerful Kanan Jarrus is, I love it. He's one of my favorite characters. Pretty fun. Okay. Number three for Greg. Realization of Ezra's parents being gone for eight years. Ezra's been on his own for a while. Yes, he has. It's very kind of sad. Not to kind of say it's just sad, but it's very well done. Very well executed. Number three for me to the Inquisitor flying a TIE fighter. Who knew he had those type of skills? Of course, you know, you know, Minta, you know how those Sith wielders are, those Force dark side users are. Ross is number three. Ezra and Kanan's excited Imperial Lothal, Locale, Locale improv session to fool the Stormtrooper. Very good. Easy for me to say, huh? Number three for Jason. The ghost crew disrupting Empire Day, especially by blowing stuff up. And Henrik's number three. So he's saying now to Zips, we can finally throw the explosive, which he certainly does. That was very kind of tense that long they made him wait, too. Number three for Mary, the team realizing that Empire Day is Ezra's birthday. And Ezra remembering his parents. Sabine cleaning up the disc. So Ezra now is a picture of his family. It was really, really lovely. Nice way to end the episode. Blake's through the Inquisitor in his ship. His costume design is superb. Most definitely. Brian's three. The ghost flying through the crowds being clouds being chased by the ties and the almost the exact same movement as the Falcon and the Empire Strikes Back in the asteroid field, which I'm sure is not as is not an accident. Number three for Ben Keenan with a mocking celebration of the fireworks and saying Empire Day with a southern accent. Where in the galaxy do they speak with a southern accent? That is a good question. That is a very good question. Apparently um, on Lothal they do, right? Uh, Jamie's number three. Chopper celebration and his combat success. I'm waiting now weekly for the antics, which you know they will certainly come. Liberty's number three. The forced celebration of Empire Day. You can tell the locals are not standing behind the Empire. No, they aren't. No, they are not. All right, let's go ahead and jump into number two. We're getting close. Number two for me. Empire Day significance. It's been mentioned before, but I really think, really think that it's important that we acknowledge uh, how much this adds to the mythos. It adds to a timeline with Revenge of the Sith and how close we are to A New Hope and having Ezra being born the day that the Empire is created is very metaphorical, certainly something we can talk a lot about on a future show or a blog or something like that, but I really think it's important, it's powerful, and it it just really sort of irrevocably ties and unites Ezra Bridger to the Empire, much to his immense, immense chagrin, and rightfully so. Let's see. Uh, Liberty's number three. I don't remember if I mentioned his Liberty, but I'm going to mention it again. The number three for Liberty was the fourth celebration of Empire Day. You can tell the locals are not standing behind the Empire. Number two for Ross, the dual cliffhanger ending. How will the ghost crew get away and what happened to Ezra's parents? That It's a massive cliffhanger. In fact, we kind of snuck and watched the next one too because we couldn't wait. Just saying. Number two for Greg, to see the abilities of Sivo's headpiece, which was the same as Lobot. Yes, that's right. We'll see that later in the series. Means is number two, Ezra hearing his parents' voices from one perspective made a slight connection once he let his guard down. It's true. It's very true. Uh, Jason's number two, Chopper flexing his arms after blasting the Imperial Troop transport. And Henrik's number two, the ghost crew blowing up the TIE fighter. Love that. You know, I love hearing everybody's feedback here. It's just cool to see what resonates with all of you. So thank you again for joining me every week and sharing these things. It's so much fun. That's what Star Wars is all about, right? The conversation. Blake's number two, the assault on the parade and all the craziness that followed. And there's a lot of it. Some interesting fireworks, too. Mary's number two. The visuals of Lothal were stunning. Sabine's fireworks are amazing as well. Liberty's number two, Rebel Scum. I just love hearing that. It is pretty fun. Number two for Ben, Jedi training. If you want to connect with others, you have to let your guard down. True for Padawans and humans everywhere. Definitely. Uh, Brian's number two, 
The crew of the ghost finds out that Empire Day is Ezra's birthday and why he's so withdrawn during the episode. Then the bombshell that Ezra's the same age as Luke and Leia. You know, I you know, hadn't thought about that in a while. But of course, that's that's the thing. Of course it is. I, I think that makes sense. So, wow. Crazy, right? Jamie's number two, Ezra's connection to his parents, to their voices, and their continued impact on him eight years later. Very powerful. Josh, this also ties in Luke and Leia, all three having the same birthday. There you go. Uh, like uh, Brian had mentioned. Mary says, yes, I continued and watched the next episode as well. Too hard not to watch the next episode when it says to be continued at the end of an episode. You know, I, I even I was like, I like sort of delaying that kind of stuff, but even after this one, even though I knew it was going to happen, Mason's like, we got to watch this. We got to see what happens. And then he says, well, why don't we just watch the beginning of the episode? And then, of course, after about five seconds, we're like, no, let's just watch the whole thing. And we did. We did. All right. Time for number one. Number one moment from Star Wars Rebels Empire Day for me. Force training intro. Look, the beginning. Whenever I, you know, people who've been listening to the show, this shouldn't be a surprise that this is my number one. When I see... Kanan and Ezra, when, when Kanan imparts wisdom, Ezra's more frustrated here than he's ever been because of the Empire Day. He hasn't shared that with everyone just yet, but but it starts, we start to see why he's got a wall built up and why this is such a hard day for him. And Kanan being able to circumnavigate the teen angst and the anger and the pushback and just be calm and cool and maintain his, in his focus and his insistence on what Ezra needs to do. It's just great. He's, I think he might be the best teacher in Star Wars, Kanan Jarrus. I mean, he, he might be. I'm just saying. I feel okay saying that. Uh, Ben's already finished season one. I'm coming back to watch with everyone again. Ha, love it. Ben, now, have you seen the whole series? I feel like you have, but I'm not sure. Josh, uh, Mary says, Josh, I remember when we watched this original during the original run. This made such a connection for the, this new show to the original. So I think that's why... It's kind of to the test of time, hasn't it, Mary? Ross's number one is his very much his feel for Ezra and his emotional struggles with Empire Day, his birthday, and his thoughts on his parents. Definitely, Ross. And Ross, I still can't get over that. How great. I love that. Love your profile picture with your hat. It's pretty neat. Greg's number one. Kanan's Leap, I agree, is such a great move. Plus, using the lightsaber while escaping. Hard not to put Chopper on this list. And please don't tell Aaron Harris on me. I won't tell. I promise. He might hear it, but I won't tell him. He does number one, the real reason why the Empire Day for Ezra learning he was born on the day the Empire was born was surprising. It's even more intense than we left on a cliffhanger. Emotional damage. A lot of it, unfortunately. But Ezra's a good healer in many ways. Brian's number one, Kanan training Ezra to connect with living creatures. It's such a small beginning lesson that blossoms as he grows. We've seen them match quite a few this week. Yes, we did, Brian. I, I am honored to be on the same wavelength as you. Jason is number one. Kanan the Force is incredible. Force jump into the ghost. And his quote, if you hang on to your past, if you always try to protect yourself, you'll never be a Jedi. Very powerful. Kanan even encourages attachments at the beginning of this, which I think is interesting to point out. Henrik's number one is just Empire Day in general. I can't fault you with that, Henrik. That's a great one. Mason liked that one too. Liberty's number one, Kanan teaching Ezra about connecting to others. Ezra has walled himself off and has a hard time being open enough to use the Force, teaching him he is not alone. Mary's number one, Kanan the Inquisitor. We see more of Kanan's strength in the Force continued, continuing to grow more and more. Yes, definitely. Blake's number one, the Cantina. I'm a sucker for them in Star Wars. Also, the troopers roaming uh, and looking for the Rodian to me was heavily inspired by the scene in the Mos Eisley Cantina in A New Hope when they walked by Han and Chewie. Pretty cool. Hey, I love your shirt and your profile picture too, Blake. That's great. Uh, ben did see the whole series. That's what I thought. Uh, Ben's number one is the revelation. The Empire Day is Ezra's birthday. But I love this part more because of Sabine's response. She feels for him. And if I had to pinpoint a moment, i say this is where her friendship with Ezra truly begins. I agree with that. I agree with that. I think it's the last time he makes an uncomfortable flirting comment, too. I think. I think it is. Number one, Josh accidentally rewatched the entire series. I think Rebels is one of the uh, one of the star best Star Wars series of all time. I agree with that, Josh. I absolutely agree with that. Liberty says she agrees with me that Kanan may be the best Jedi teacher. He even used a phrase attached to others and made me go, hmm, I know I that was an eyebrow razor, and I had to rewind that a couple of times to really kind of soak that one in. All right, everybody, thank you for sharing your list. Next week, 
is part two of this two-parter top five moments from star wars rebels gathering forces gathering forces so get your list ready for next week it'd be fun you know watch it on star wars day on may the 4th why not let's go ahead and jump into ask dan z So how are you going to celebrate Star Wars Day, May the 4th? Are you going to be buying stuff? Are you going to listen to Coffee with Kenobi? Are you going to be watching any of the movies or Star Wars Rebels? What are you going to do? Yeah, accidentally is pretty good. Accidentally watch the whole thing again. It's clever, Josh. I'm going to do... I mean, I'll have school, of course. Many of us will be working on May the 4th. But I'll be wearing a Star Wars shirt to school, naturally. Um... Mason has a game that night, so we've already joked that he's going to win for Star Wars Day. This is going to be fun, right? Um, Coffee with Kenobi normally comes out on Thursdays, but this week it's going to come out on Wednesday for May the 4th, uh, and it's going to be the next in our series that we do right before Celebration. Uh, with a month to go, we we go over Celebration. Me, Tom Gross, and Corey Club. Last week we talked about all the panels, the virtual, uh, the hyperspace lane, uh, lining up for the virtual cues and how that works, the different guests that are going to be there for autographs. Uh, and this week, uh, for, for show 521, it will be more of the same. I think we're going to be giving you some tips about celebration as well. Also this week, uh, Top 5 Jedi Knights and CWK Pro. This is a hard one because I picked the top ones, not necessarily my favorites, but just to me the top ones and their significance and impact on the overall story. There's a lot of hair-pulling for me, because I had a hard time leaving some off, but it was fun. It was great fun. So does anybody have any questions for me about Celebration or anything like that? Uh, Blake says he recently bought Heir to the Empire Trilogy. You're going to start that. Dude, have you ever read it before? It's insane. You're going to love it. Craig is here. I also uses Star Wars in the classroom. Hello, my friend. Craig is going to start his Heroes Journey unit on May the 4th. That seems perfect. Jason says, Henrik and I are going to watch Return of the Jedi. I'll be wearing a Star Wars shirt to work and listening to Star Wars music all day. Which pretty much do every day. Love it. Craig says he's curious about what Tops is going to do. Generally, they release a May the 4th set online. P.S. Love, the Road to Celebration podcast series returning. Well, thank you, Craig. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Jessica is going to wear her favorite Rebels t-shirt and her Zoom background will be something Star Wars. I already told my team to get ready. That's great, Jessica. You're, you're doing you're doing the work of the Force. Love it. Ben, what do I says once know what I think about the new series they announced, Tales of the Jedi. They just they didn't really say much about it, did they? But we're gonna find out a lot about it at Celebration. I love it. I don't know anything about it, but I'm thrilled. I mean, I, the Jedi are my favorite part of Star Wars, besides the Falcon. Lightsabers, so I'm I think it's great. Josh is gonna work, Sea Scout meeting, not sure what film to watch, but we'll end up by staying up to watch Strange New Worlds. It is a busy geek week. Yes, it is. Mary's gonna be our Mint is gonna be working on May the fourth, but she'll be geeking out while working from home. Nice. That is that's this is the May. I'm gonna credit you for that every time, Minta. Mary's definitely listening to CWK. We started re watching the movies this weekend. Have to watch the finale of Moon Knight. Oh yeah, that's gonna be on May the fourth. Uh Minta uh, Brian says he's gonna be making Star Wars food for breakfast and dinner on Wednesday. Fantastic. You guys post some pictures, Brian in the cafe so we can see him. Ben's wearing his Star Wars socks to work. You rebel. You rebel. Not a rebel scum, but you rebel. Jason, with you being so busy during celebration, will you be sending Tom and our Corey out on special assignments for CWK? You know, uh, we'll be doing some stuff for sure. They're going to be busy doing some fun stuff. Probably stuff for pour over. Uh, maybe not for coffee with Kenobi necessarily, but we're still kind of working on that. We still got we still got a lot of brainstorming sessions to do. That's a good it's a good point. Mary says Blake, it's so good. Uh, Greg says Dan, I'm curious how the mythology panel will be the same or different from Chicago. Either way, it's where I got to meet the whole CWK crew for the first time. You know, I always think, whenever I think about that panel, I always think about meeting you and what a blessing that was. So, Greg, honestly, you probably heard me talk about this before, but that mythology panel I made up on the fly because that's kind of, I'm more comfortable doing that. It's kind of, there's a teacher part of me that that likes that. So, I don't know. I was just going to see how I feel and what kind of, I get the sense people are wanting me to talk about, but... It'll be similar but different. I won't explain it the same way either. I think I've got some more detail to share as well. So looking forward to that, Greg. Liberty's planning on watching Rogue One for Star Wars Day. Awesome. Uh, and so is Ross. Very, very cool. All right. 
Star Wars Day is here. It's the week of Star Wars, the month of Star Wars. You've got Obi-Wan Kenobi coming out. You've got Star Wars Celebration. You've got four episodes of Coffee with Kenobi. Plus, you've got the show every Monday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. Really appreciate all of you. I hope if you're in this area that you're going to join me on June 18th for a book signing, book talk, and we get to watch New Hope on the big screen on June 18th at the Peoria Riverfront Museum. Ben wants to know if anybody's going to watch the NFL playoffs. You know, I'm not a big NHL guy, Ben, but Dennis Keithley is, so I'm sure he probably is. If you are at Star Celebration, don't forget May 26th, 7 o'clock p.m. at the Hilton and I Mix Lounge. All podcasts and podcast listeners are welcome to join us. Don't forget, I, I really, I just don't want anybody to miss out if they want to get one. But if you are interested in buying these hats, you've got until tomorrow night to place your order. We need to, I think, get five more ordered to make this happen. So if you're interested, be sure to act quickly. Again, go to coffeewithcomedy.com. You can see the link there. It's all over social media as well. Blake, thanks, man. Good night to you. Ross says, thanks for letting me hang out with you tonight, friends. Great job as always. Well, thank you, Ross. Talking really fast tonight, but got lots to say. Uh, good stuff. Greg, great evening. May the fourth be with you. Liberty says, great minds think alike. There you go. Caps versus the number one seed. There's Ross. He's a big Washington guy. Josh, we'll see you soon. Jason, have a great weekend. For sure, happy Star Wars Day. Brian says, great way to start the best week of the year. Thanks. Dan. Well, thanks, brother. Appreciate it. Appreciate you all so much. We will see you next week. Be sure to join me on Wednesday for a bonus coffee with Kenobi. We'll have the show out this Wednesday instead of Thursday to celebrate May the 4th together. Until then, have a good one. I'll see you next Monday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. Bring your May the 4th stories next week. We will have a good time sharing and celebrating Star Wars today. Thanks, everybody. Ben says, thanks for sharing the swag list. You are welcome. Don't forget, I'm going to post this as soon as I hang up hang up, whatever, that you can win this Obi-Wan Kenobi Black Series. Post in the CWK Cafe under the thread I'm going to post what you love about Obi-Wan Kenobi. Until then, see you next time, my friends. This is the podcast you're looking for. Happy May the 4th. This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. The official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other Star Wars-related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi unless otherwise indicated. This is the podcast you're looking for. There's no one here.